How are you doing guys? Thanks for taking time to watch this video. This is a short, sharp video on ICE and the CSA exam. I'm Amin Aurora, I'm a GP and TPD based in Birmingham. I remember doing this exam myself and I remember over analyzing ICE, trying to think about what the best way to do it is, what the right questions are, how to do it, when to do it. A lot of questions can clutter yourself when it comes down to the ICE in the exam. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time maybe giving you um, a decluttering all that stuff that you can get out there on the internet and try and put it in a short, sharp package for you to uh, take it forward in your own preparation. It's not the right answers, there are lots of ways of doing ICE, you're gonna come up with your own way that works for you. But what I've tried to do is a couple of don'ts, a couple of things to avoid um, in order to try and make it look like you're not doing it for the wrong reasons, i.e. the book's told you to do it, the course has told you to do it, and you know you're supposed to do it and that's why we're doing it. And changing it into something that actually is useful for you, that demonstrates that you know why you're doing ICE, and demonstrate that you're actually trying to do it for the benefit of the patient, trying to get out those things that um, are useful for them, that's going to allow you to do a better management person for that patient in particular. I think it's important to understand why we're doing ICE. Some people avoid it because I've heard, oh, we're not supposed to do ICE anymore, it's not being liked. But you know, as a doctor, as a GP, ICE is so important because you're in a way digging out their health beliefs, aren't you? So it's a good tool to get out actually what's going on in the patient's mind here. Now, if you don't get those things out, if you don't get those sort of thoughts that are flowing around their mind, the deep line worries that are flowing inside them, and the triggers to get them to come to the doctor, for example, you can do the best management plan in the world in terms of the medications you prescribe or the referrals that you do or the reassurance that you give or you could be the best doctor in terms of interpersonal skills, you can pick up on the cues, you can do all that kind of stuff. But when the patient goes home at the end of the day, if you haven't sucked those things out and acknowledged them and addressed them and answered some of those queries that they have, they're still gonna go home thinking about those things. They're still gonna come back next week, next month, you know, for the rest of the year until they get those answers talked about, discussed, um, and, and looked at in a bit of detail. So ICE is really important to get those things out, to understand the patient's health beliefs, and that's why we do it. But there are good ways to do it, there are bad ways to do it, like so many things in this exam, it's not what you do or what you don't do that's, that's the important thing, it's how you do it. So like I said, I'm gonna try and go with a few things to avoid, um, to hopefully make your own ICE when you do it, um, look like you're doing it for the right reasons. So the first major don't, I would say, is don't pre-plan ICE too much. Don't over-plan it. Don't make it come to a stage where you've figured out exactly what you're going to do in terms of what questions you're going to use, when you're going to do it, how you're going to do it, and therefore when you come to actually do it, it looks like it's so planned and so rigid that it's just a formula. You've got to have a couple of approaches there. The commonest thing that people pre-plan is the questions they're going to use. So they have a set question for I, a set question for C, and a set question for E, and they just regurgitate that each and every time for every patient they practice with, every role play they do with their colleagues, and ultimately therefore every single case they do in the exam. You can't do that. You can't have the same set of questions of eyes, for example, someone who's angry, irritated, frustrated, and then have the exact same questions for someone who's crying their eyes out, who's embarrassed, who's upset, who doesn't want to be there. You know, if you have the same approach, somewhere down the line it's going to sound odd, it's going to sound like the wrong question. So have a couple of approaches, have a couple of questions that you're comfortable with, that you've practiced many, many times before, and then pick and choose them according to the patient sitting in front of you. The other thing that people pre-plan with ICE is when I'm going to do ICE. They have a fixed formula. Okay, either I'm going to do it right at the beginning, you know, the first thing I want to do is ICE, because I want to know what's in the patient's mind so I can tailor my own questions to it. You get other people who say, I'm not going to come to ICE until the end of data gathering. So I'm going to do all of the questions first, figure out what's going on in my mind, and then I'm going to find out what's going on in the patient's mind. You know, if you're going with that kind of approach, it may say it might work in one or two type of scenarios, but it's not going to work in every single one. You know, if you're a patient, if you're a, someone who who does ICE at the beginning, for example, and someone comes in and they start saying things that are quite big for you as a doctor, you know, lots of red flags, losing weight, blah blah blah. If you just bypass that and start going on to ICE, it's going to sound really odd. Similarly, if you're someone who does ICE at the end, for example, if someone comes in and they're opening lines to things like, you know, they're, they're opening out their worries to you, they're talking about anxieties, they're talking about concerns, fears, and we bypass all that thinking that I'm not going to come to my C-type, concern-type stuff until the end, it's going to look really odd, it's going to look pre-planned, it's going to look like you're not listening to the patient, you're not picking up on cues. So pre-planning ICE to such an extent that there's no flexibility there is going to work to your detriment. It's going to look like it is formalized. It's going to look like it is learned. It's going to look like you're doing it because you think that there's a way to do it. There's a formula to do it. You've got to be flexible. You've got to have two or three approaches. You've got to be adaptable and you've got to do it according to what the patient's in front of you. So don't pre-plan it too much. 
Plan it, prepare it, work on some ideas, but don't do it to the extent that you're not going to do anything else or there's nothing else that you're going to try um, and do when you see your patients. Second big don't, don't forget to reflect on ice and don't forget to take things further that need taking further. So often when we practice cases, we hear ice being very structured, very formulaic. For example, you get a young guy come with back pain. Oh, Mr. Smith, what do you think is going on today? Oh, I'll probably just pulled a muscle doctor. And is there anything particularly worrying you about this? Yeah, doc, I do a lot of lifting at work. You know, if I can't lift, they're going to sack me. I'm going to lose my job. And what do you think we could do for this today, Mr. Smith? Oh, my uncle, he had a, um, an MRI scan when he had back pain. I wonder if I need one of those. Okay, so you've done ice there. You've got your three answers. But really, it just looks like you've learned those things. You've done it question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. Thank you very much. I've got the information. Move on. The patient's opened up there. Okay, They've given you a couple of things that are from within their mind. They may not have talked about this to anyone else before. And we've just walked on and, and taken thank you very much and moved on. So practice reflecting things back, even if it's just at that point, a little line that you give back to the answer, just to show them that I understand what you're saying, I get what you're saying, and I wanted to know that information as opposed to I needed to know that information. You can open it and extrapolate it later on if you like, but make sure you give a little bit back. So for example, if you still want to do ice in a little uh, chunk, for example, if you're going to do that same case. And Mr. Smith, um, there's a lot, of, a lot of cause of back pain out there. Just wondered if you had any thoughts as to what might be going on here. Yeah, Doc, I'll probably just pull the muscle. You're absolutely right. Pull the muscles, you know, muscle strains, that kind of stuff is really common cause of back pain. You're right. If you come on to your concern, you know, Mr. Smith, you, you do look a little bit down and disturbed about something. I'm just wondering, anything particularly worrying you about all of this? Yeah, Doc, I mean, I do a lot of lifting at work, and if I can't do that, they're going to sack me. I'm going to lose my job. Oh, gosh, we don't want you to lose your job. You, know, you mentioned you've got a couple of kids at home and things. We certainly don't want that to happen. Um, I'm going to come back to your job in a little while, but I'll bear that in mind. Whenever you come on to your expectation type question, you know, Mr. Smith, you mentioned that you've tried some painkillers already. You've done a few stretches yourself. Just wondering, is there anything you thought we could add to all of this? Well, yeah, Doc, my uncle, he had a, an MRI scan. I wonder if he's one of those. Yeah, absolutely right. We do do MRI scans for back pain. Not in every single case, but maybe once we've examined you, had a bit more of a chat, we can see if it's reasonable for you or not. So get used to, when you get an answer for eyes, whenever you choose to do it, however you choose to do it, don't just accept that answer, internalize it, and move on. Sometimes that triggers, and things need to be opened up a little bit more. Things need to be explored. Things need to be reflected back to the patient. So don't just use eyes as an information gainer. Use it in a way that you're showing, you're demonstrating that actually I understand why I'm asking those questions, because they have an impact on this patient, and I'm going to use that stuff in order to make the management more tailored for them. And probably the other major don't that I would say don't do with ICE is don't just accept and think you've dealt with ICE in data gathering. That's just half the job. Getting this, those things out in the first half, understanding the patient's health belief is only half the job. You've got to come back to that stuff in the second half. So often you hear some, some people do data gathering. They'll get all the information out. They'll understand those things that are going on in the patient's mind. They'll even reflect them. They'll demonstrate that they get why they're doing those questions. By the time it comes to the second half, it's gone, it's vanished. It's just a generic management, nothing to do with the stuff that the patient has opened up to you in the first half. So you end up thinking, why have you bothered doing ICE in the first place? What was the point of finding out that he thought an MRI scan was useful? What was the point of finding out that, that person wanted some antibiotics? What was the point of finding out that they they were worried about if they get cancer, then how are they going to look after their parents and you know later on down the line? There's no point in doing that if you're going to blank it out and just do a generic plan in the second half. So you've got to get into the habit of bringing those things back because a lot of that stuff is going to determine what you talk about in the second half. A lot of that stuff is going to determine how your management plan is and how you're making it tailored to that person in particular. So example, getting used to saying things like, look, um, Mr. Smith, I know you mentioned that you thought you might need some antibiotics earlier, but actually having chatted to you, blah, 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 I think that we, you know, we may not need to, for example. Or Mr. Jones, you mentioned that you might need a CT scan of your head earlier. Now, actually having talked to you, listened to you, understood the story, actually I think it's probably not top of my list of things that I would go for here. 
You know, you've got to show that the ice is being done for a reason. It's not just on the tick box list of things that you need to do because that's what you've been told you have to do. You need to demonstrate that as a GP, it's really important to get those things out so that I can use that information to my advantage. Just like you're doing, say, red flags, you're using that information to make a management plan. Just like when you do your psychosocial stuff, you need to demonstrate that you're using that information in a way that can suit the patient in the second half. Ice is exactly the same. Don't do the question if you're not going to demonstrate why you're doing it in the first place. So guys, hopefully you've seen that ICE is not a science, it's not something that you can learn in an hour or perfect in an hour. It takes time to work on these things, perfect these things, rehearse these things, use them again and again. Have two or three different ways of doing it so that you can be flexible in the exam and show that you're doing ICE for the right reasons, for the reasons that you know uh, as a GP why it's so important and not because it has to be done. Hopefully you haven't waffled on too much. Hopefully you picked some useful things. Hopefully you can rewind what you bits that you need to, take away things that you think you can put into your own practice. Uh, if you are doing the exam in the near future, good luck. I'm sure you'll be fine. I know it's stressful. I know it's worrying. I've been there myself. But like I said, I'm sure you'll be fine. Um, if you guys have any other queries or, or thoughts as to videos I can produce for GP training, please tweet me, email me. My details should be down here. Otherwise, hopefully I'll see you soon and take care.